Thank you so much. Uh, it's such a pleasure to be a part of this discussion, this very important discussion today. And thank you for such a generous introduction. Um, as you've heard, the numbers of children have been increasing. And I agree that it is not a crisis given the, the size of the United States and the resources. But there's no denying that since 2012, before 2012, the numbers of unaccompanied children arriving were between um, 6,000 and 8,000 a year. And they began to double in 2012, going up to over 13,000, 2013, 24,000. Um, this year already, as you heard, 66,000. Um, so the numbers are, are going up, which really causes us to ask some questions about why, and also to ask some questions about what should be the appropriate response. Um, there have been politicians who have been you know, trying to make hay out of this, and their response as to the why is that we're too nice to the kids. We're too lenient. We should really get tough. And there were, you know, what they were talking about was a law that was passed in 2008 with bipartisan support during the administration of President Bush. It was called the Torture Victim Protection Reauthorization Act, the TVPRA, which actually said, let's give kids a little bit more process than we give adults. And I don't want to bore you with the technicalities, but, but let me just sort of explain one little thing about this. In the US before 1996, anybody who reached our shores could ask for asylum and have their cases decided. In 1996, which was a very big wave of anti-immigrant sentiment, we passed a law that had a provision that made it a lot harder to access our asylum system. Everybody who arrived had to pass a screening mechanism before they would be even permitted to apply for asylum. That's called expedited removal. And that's been in place since the beginning of 1997, enacted in 1996, into effect in 1997. And what the Torture Victim Protection Reauthorization Act of 2008 said is, gee, let's give the kids a little bit more process. Let's not make them have to prove their case immediately upon arriving, but let's actually give them some time to adjust and to actually pursue the claim. So this is like our too lenient on kids, is that we're not putting them in regular detention facilities, we're actually putting them in more appropriate shelters, <clears throat> we're trying to re reunite them with family, and we're trying to give them a little breathing space before we ask them to talk about why they came. So this is what the pol some of the anti-immigrant politicians seized upon, is let's take that away and let's treat them the way we treat the adults, and just, you know, as quickly as possible, lock them up and deport them. And unfortunately, um, at first, President Obama and his administration's response was to actually adopt that narrative, that we're too nice, and to actually call for Congress to amend the Torture Victim Protection Reauthorization Act, which was very disappointing to those of us about this issue, we expected more. Um, when Congress, Congress has not yet done that, but what the President has done um, administratively is actually many things that were quite restrictive. So the increase of detention, we now have detention of mothers with children on the border, we have detention centers in Artesia, New Mexico. Um, we have um, plans to build a very large detention center in Texas. And we are moving these kids through the system. You may have heard about the infamous rocket dockets, which refers to the fact that the Obama administration has given the, the, the directive that these kids are to be moved through the system as quickly as possible. And when you are moving kids through a system as quickly as possible, you don't have time for them to find lawyers. You don't have time for them to have sort of acclimate. And the, the, it, the entire community, and I really credit um, California and what the governor and the legislature and the attorney general have done to try to bring together those resources to support these kids. Because what we are now seeing in San Francisco, and some of you know this, is 50 or 60 or more kids you know, appearing in immigration court scrambling to find lawyers, and the community is scrambling to respond. OK, so my, my, my first point is that the, the, um, the, the you know, politicizing this and scapegoating the kids and trying to use the arrival of the kids as a justification for taking away process is just wrong. It's not appealing to our better soul, right? It's appealing to the restrictive circle of the wagons. 
Um, but the second thing is, it's the wrong answer to the question. What, you know, I think this is what my co-panelists were saying. Why are these kids coming? They're not coming because we're so nice. I mean, it's nice if we could be nice, but that's not why they're, they're coming, right? They're coming because of levels, high levels of violence in all of the countries, the El Salvador, uh, Guatemala, and Honduras, the levels of, of violence. Um, we, if we look at just the level homicide rates in these three countries are among the highest in the world. Um, Honduras actually has the highest homicide rate in the world. El Salvador is the fourth highest. Um, Guatemala is the fifth highest. This is homicide rates. If you look at issues about violence against women, which is a whole other subject that I work on quite a bit, um, and we have a phenomenon that's been referred to as femicide, which is gender-motivated killings of women, we have... Um, El Salvador actually having the highest femicide rate in the world. Think about that, absorb that. Guatemala with the third highest, Honduras with the seventh highest. And we're talking about a phenomenon that is underreported. So those numbers may not reflect the true, you know, the true dimensions of these levels of violence. Um, so a lot of the violence is the result of organized crime and gangs. But it's also all of the other factors of intervention of what the US has done in this region. And the gangs, you know, they're, they're, if, if I had more than one minute, I, we could talk, you know, and this could be something we'll talk about more. But they are coming for this reason. <coughs> and because they are coming for these forms of violence, many, if not all of them, would have legit, legitimate claims for protection as refugees. But the way in which the law is being interpreted and applied. I mean, one thing is just trying to rush them through the system so that they don't have lawyers and they don't have the opportunity. But the other really invidious fact is that our courts are interpreting the law in a way that really excludes them from protection for the most part. And one of the things I'll leave you with is a very sobering sort of tragic um, observation is that these kids that are being deported are um, are in fact being killed. There was an, uh, an article um, that was in um, Huffington Post, written by um, an LA Times reporter, who, talk, who interviewed the director of the morgue in Honduras, who said that since February, there had been at least five or 10 children who showed up at the morgue who had been killed within a week of being deported from the United States. And so this is not the country that we want to be. Thank you very much.